We're here at the J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference in San Francisco, and joining me in the studio this afternoon uh, from BioFrontera is the CEO, uh, Herman Lubert. Uh, Herman, good to see you here today. Um, we know that uh, BioFrontera specializes in the area of treating uh, skin disease and regenerative care. Can you tell us a little bit about the products that you have in the market or bringing to the U.S. market? Yes, we have uh, currently products on the European market and we are in the process of getting approval for one of these products also in the U.S. And um, we expect to be able to launch in the fall of this year. And this particular product is uh, a prescription drug for a form of non-melanoma skin cancer called actinic keratosis which actually affects uh, a large part of the Caucasian population. It's uh, the consequence of long-term uh, sun damage and because of people getting older and uh, our lifestyle, this disease is, uh, is, is growing and it's becoming more and more of important. And so how many patients um, approximately will be d diagnosed in a given year with this condition? Um, currently, with this condition, in the U.S., there are five and a half million people who are treated every year uh, for non-melanoma skin cancer. And uh, an early form of non-melanoma skin cancer precursor is even um, much more frequent than this. So this is all caused by excessive sun damage. Um, what does the treatment look like? Is it a topical? Uh, what, what are you bringing to market? It's a topical treatment, a topical drug combined with a light treatment. So the drug would be applied to the patient and then two, three hours later, um, uh, the patient goes under a lamp for 10 minutes and that would be the entire treatment. And after just one treatment, 60% of the patients are fully cleared from all their, their um, the, 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 this form of cancer is called actinic keratosis so from all their keratoses, and uh, after a maximum of two treatments, 90% of the patients are fully cleared. And so you're in clinical trials right now in the U.S., is that correct? No, we are in the approval process, and um, the FDA is about two-thirds through their, through their review, and so far there isn't any issue. And what are some of the, if any, competitive products that are on the market, and what advantage does yours have over other products that are out there? There's one product which is fairly similar to ours, also uses the combination of a drug and a light treatment. But uh, in our clinical trials, the clearance rates that we could achieve are substantially higher than those that are reported for the other drug. Okay, and when we talk about regenerative care, um, tell us a little bit about what that means. Well, regenerative care, this is a different product line. And this is what we call a, a dermocosmetic. So it's a, it's a cosmetic line, but it's uh, designed for application to, to diseased skin. But as a cosmetic. I see. And um, so what we basically include into that cosmetic line is a number of plant extracts which have some um, regenerative function on the specific conditions that these drugs, they are not drugs, these cosmetics are designed for. And so when you say cosmetics, what's the difference? Uh, how should our, our viewers distinguish between a drug and a cosmetic? Well, in the end, the difference between a drug and a cosmetic is a regulatory difference. A drug is approved as a drug and it's applied um, as a drug, so it's sold through a drug store and, and used, um, if it's a prescription drug, prescribed by a doctor. A cosmetic can, some cosmetics, um, can also have effect um, on, um, on diseased skin, but they are not used to treat the disease. They are used to, as, as regenerative uh, procedures, and um, they are sold in different ways. So selling them is not restricted to pharmacies, and, um, and they are not prescribed by a doctor. So I know that the FDA is fast-tracking a lot of approvals recently, um, getting new products to market, especially in the area of oncology. Um, are, are you seeing this true to be uh, the case with some of the DERM products um, that are coming through the system? 
Um, I don't see any products that are coming through the system um, that get fast-tracked. Um, we didn't get fast-tracked, but we also didn't need it. And um, we expect approval for our drug actually in, in May. Well, Herman, thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate all the work that you're doing for patients. Uh, keep up the good work and good luck to you. Thank you very much.